The head of the utility in charge of Japan's damaged nuclear plant has faced some tough questions. Tokyo Electric Power Company President Naomi Hirose had a rare meeting with the chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority, Shunichi Tanaka. Tanaka asked Hirose how TEPCO managers plan to prevent more problems at Fukushima Daiichi following a series of radioactive water leaks. The president said he intends to send more workers to the crippled facility, including those now at another idle nuclear plant. He also said TEPCO plans to support the workers to ensure they can make full use of their skills. Tanaka asked Hirose to improve working conditions inside the Fukushima plant, including for those who are dealing with the decontamination process. He reportedly said he wants the utility to carry out drastic long-term reforms. Managers of Japan's damaged nuclear plants seem to be making progress in getting their system to decontaminate radioactive water fully operational. They started up another part of the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS. Engineers with Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, began testing one of three operational lines for ALPS. The system can remove 62 kinds of radioactive substances excluding tritium. The engineers suspended the line in June after unprocessed radioactive water leaked out of a stainless steel tank. They discovered salt and chemicals had been eroding these tanks, leaving small holes. The engineers began a trial run of another ALPS operational line about a month ago. They plan to test the remaining one in mid-November. Plant managers had wanted the system to be fully running by last month. But the repeated malfunctions and suspensions have forced them to change that to next year. They want to build three more operational lines for Alps in 2014 and use government aid to set up a, uh, government aid to set up a facility rather capable of decontaminating more radioactive water. TEPCO plans to finish cleaning up all of its stored wastewater by March 2015. About 440,000 tons of radioactive water is being stored at Fukushima Daiichi. Heavy rains have added to the complications of the cleanup at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Rainwater accumulated in containment areas around tanks storing radioactive water and spilled outside. A typhoon moved through the area last week. Then on Sunday, another storm brought more than 100 millimeters of precipitation, causing rainwater to overflow from 11 barriers. Water in six of the barriers contained radioactive strontium beyond the government-approved limit. The highest reading was more than 70 times the maximum permitted level. Workers are trying to determine whether some of the water flowed through ditches and into the Pacific Ocean. Tokyo Electric Power Company said pumps were unable to keep up with a deluge. So 19 more are being installed. Larger hoses will be used too to move water more quickly. The company also plans to continuously monitor radiation levels offshore. TEPCO officials met with a panel from the Nuclear Regulation Authority studying the impact of the leaks. Some experts believe more frequent checks will allow a quicker response to problems. TEPCO currently collects data from coastal waters once a day. The NRA monitors waters up to 300 kilometers from the plant. The regulators intend to expand their observations to as much as 3,000 kilometers. Ships will be asked to cooperate. The information then could be shared with countries around the northern Pacific Rim. Hello and welcome to this hour's Newsline. I'm James Tengon in Tokyo. Workers at the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant are struggling with a new problem. They're trying to prevent radioactive water that's being held back by barriers from overflowing into the compound. Water from heavy rainfall over the past few weeks has accumulated inside barriers around tanks containing radioactive water. Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun transferring the water behind the barriers elsewhere. TEPCO is holding the rainwater within the barriers in order to check it for radioactivity.
However, as the rainwater in two of the barriers was thought to be on the verge of overflowing, the water was released into the surrounding compound after it was checked for radioactivity. A Japanese research team says most of the radioactive cesium that fell on the forest floor after the accident at the Fukushima plant is still in the same place. Researchers from the Japan Atomic Energy Agency installed monitoring equipment in woods in Ibaraki near Fukushima Prefecture in May 2011. That was two months after the accident. They hoped to learn how cesium moves from fallen leaves to soil. The results showed that rain washed it off leaves six months after the accident. The researchers say that as the leaves decomposed, the cesium moved into the soil. In two years of research, they say that only about 0.1 to 0.2 percent has reached a depth of 10 centimeters. The results suggest that the cesium has not penetrated deep into the ground. I believe the findings will be useful in efforts to decontaminate affected areas. They concluded it's unlikely that underground water probably has carried radioactive cesium from the soil to nearby areas. Soma port lies just 30 kilometers north of the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. Fishing resumed here last month following the lifting of a ban imposed after it was revealed in July that radioactive water had leaked into the ocean. As the fishermen prepared to cast their nets once again, the head of the local fishing cooperative offered his encouragement. Due to the problem of the contaminated water, I know you all have various concerns. By embarking on this trial fishing, we must show that the fisheries cooperative in Soma Futaba is willing to continue fishing. The fishermen are permitted to land 16 types of seafood. Around 95% of the catch is discarded. Many fishermen are concerned about the future of their livelihood. We are worried whether or not we can actually sell the fish. Opening a new session of Parliament this month, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe insisted the radiation leaks do not pose a threat to human health. The local fishermen are suffering from a bad reputation founded on falsehood. The effects on food and water are way below the limits for radiation levels. Just offshore from the Fukushima plant, scientists from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in the United States are working alongside Japanese counterparts monitoring radiation levels. Among them is Ken Buesela, who spoke to VOA via Skype. That radiation is moving across the Pacific, but it gets much, much lower, even short distances offshore. Buesela says a bigger concern is the accumulation of isotopes in marine life. Earlier this year, cesium isotopes from Fukushima were found in tuna caught off California. The tuna were caught off San Diego with the Fukushima cesium isotopes. They were 10 to 20 times lower than they had been off Japan. Now, the new releases, the leaks from the tanks, they're changing in character. Strontium-90 has become of more concern because it's a bone-seeking isotope. That will stay in fish much longer. TEPCO, the owner of the Fukushima plant, is building an underground frozen wall to prevent contaminated water from leaking into the sea. It is also experimenting with a system to decontaminate the water. A nuclear expert at the environmental organization Greenpeace, Rihanna Toole, says it's not clear those technologies will work. They already spend a lot of money trying to, to implement them. What uh, Greenpeace wants is that the government really gets in international advice and gets as much support as possible to try and find the right solution for this problem. The livelihood of the fishermen of Fukushima depend on finding that solution. Henry Richwell for VOA News, Tokyo. Members of the media on Monday were given a chance to look at a tunnel in Japan's north that will be used to test nuclear waste storage techniques. The underground facility was created by the Japan Atomic Energy Agency. The government-affiliated body is studying methods of nuclear waste disposal at the site in Horonobe town. The research tunnel is in a sedimentary rock formation at a depth of 350 meters. Agency experts will soon begin placing simulated nuclear waste containers in alcoves leading off the tunnel. The vessels are equipped with heat sources that keep them at up to 100 degrees Celsius to imitate radioactive waste. 
Researchers will check whether nuclear material stored at such a site is affected by temperature fluctuations, water seepage and other factors. They'll also check whether the tunnel itself sustains any damage. The data will be obtained for various conditions associated with radioactive waste. It will be the first test of its kind in Japan, and the data may help to establish ways to store nuclear waste safely. Also on Monday, the industry ministry launched a panel to re-examine its plan to build such underground disposal sites for atomic energy waste. The review is the first in 14 years. The expert panel consists of eight academics specializing in earthquakes, seismic faults, groundwater and other fields. We will conduct a thorough review that will allow us to look at whether the conventional approach to geological disposal is appropriate. If a waste site were engulfed by lava, it could cause immeasurable damage not only in Japan but globally. The ministry plans to conclude its review by March of next year. The government in 2000 enacted a law on nuclear waste disposal and has since tried without success to recruit a candidate municipality. The next Pacific Island Forum will be hosted by Iwaki City in Japan's northeastern Fukushima Prefecture. Leaders from 16 countries and regions in the South Pacific gather in Japan every three years. Diplomats from Japan and the other members scheduled their next summit meeting for May 2015. Japan's Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida made the announcement on Saturday. In preparation, ministers discussed environmental issues and regional development. They agreed to step up efforts to reduce man-made greenhouse gas emissions while working together to preserve marine life and develop natural resources. They also agreed that the rule of law is essential in ensuring safe navigation on the high seas. Kishida told reporters that he is looking forward to welcoming leaders in Iwaki. The city was devastated by earthquake and tsunami in March 2011. Iwaki City is located about 50 kilometers south of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Reconstruction Minister Takumi Nemoto said he expects the summit will be a good chance to showcase Japan's recovery efforts. Japanese government leaders hope to help alleviate environmental concerns about radiation by holding the summit in Fukushima Prefecture. After Chernobyl, we finally hear All kinds of cancer went up the next year Hard to interpret, says OPCS Can't understand it, well here is a guess Low-level isotopes from the Ukraine Drifted to Wales on the wind and the rain Rainfall is higher in Bengal than Kent Cancer in Wales is up 30% We're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA and each of beta decay in an occasional rather mutational way kills us even new labor can see what it means radioisotopes alter your genes ghosts of dead babies will give them no rest till the dosimetry's been reassessed wombling strombling banker to kent telling the news of the second event Telling the story all and two scenes A radio isotopes alter your genes Nuclear establishment, castle of lies Children are dying in front of your eyes Born with no limbs, with two heads or no brain Born to a life of incurable pain Nuclear subsidies victims will pay While you take a pension and tiptoe away Don't reassure us cause we always knew Yours was a story too slick to be true We're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular